We're live. Do, 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 do. Hello, everybody. Four million. We did it. Four million on mm -hmm. YouTube. Just comment in first just to make sure that all the uh, the quality is good. We did some checks this time, so hopefully we're good. I'm going to start things off with a, uh, a nice, fresh kombucha. Ooh, look at that focus. Look at that thing. I just put a video out on um you know the short content all the platforms this is blackberry oh thanks for that thanks for that overhead yeah, we'll switch rooney this will be my little energy booster for the live i always love a little b12 vitamin energy boost that you get from kombucha i used to think it was caffeine and there's a little bit of caffeine but it's just filled with so many b vitamins that you do get a little kick mm. So hello, everybody. We are going to be doing a cookout from the garden. I have a bunch of, look at all this beautiful produce, just epic stuff. Cucumbers, zucchini. We've got all sorts of peppers, eggplants. It's just summer abundance right now. Give me some overhead on that. So there you go. Yeah, beautiful stuff. And we're really just hanging out. We're celebrating 4 million. This is a Q&A, so, you know, any questions you want to ask. Um, I got Cooper, Cooper Man in the station over there. Okay. So Hello. send him your questions. He'll throw them up on screen, and we're going to just start cooking. I'm going to make basically dinner for my family. And if you have any ideas, too, you know, if you want to influence the meal, free, feel free to comment in. So I'm going to get things heated up on this little wok here. And what I think I'm going to do, my general idea, again, this can be influenced, you know, cooking is just sort of feeling it in the moment. Um, I'm going to soak some rice noodles first. That's always a good, you know, plan A, just get the rice noodles soaking. And you, for me, I never, ever boil rice noodles. That's like a huge mistake people make when you're doing, you know, any type of noodle dish that um, includes rice noodles, whether that's um, a noodle dish on, you know, that's a soup based or a stir fry, like a patsyu. That's kind of what we're doing today, more of a stir fry noodle. Um, I'm just getting these soaking. When you boil them, they go gummy, they overcook, and it's just, uh, it's just no good. So all you have to do, and these are more like of an instant noodle, so they shouldn't take long. But if you've got regular rice noodles, make sure you soak them for a good hour at least. This will probably be like 10 minutes for these to just start, you know, start softening up a bit. And then what happens is they soften up and then I can just throw them in the stir fry and all the sauce I add will be the final absorption to get them perfect. So they're still tender and they're not mushy. You want that perfect tender point. And I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna put that aside, put this aside and start cutting things up. So let's see, let's first get, you know what, did I not even bring onion? I, you know, I just put a video out on all the onions in the world and I didn't bring it, which is fine. You know, you don't need onion in every dish. So I'm gonna chop up these Chinese style eggplants, which, oh my God, look at these things. Wow. They are glorious. Oh, this thing's getting a little hot. And what I've realized about Chinese eggplants from growing them this year, I'm just gonna crank up the uh, exposure a little bit, is that they are the best, <laughs> just by far. Like I'm growing, you know, the Italian style uh, black eggplants, the bigger ones. But with those, you have to, uh, you have to, you know, get them salted and they take so long to break down. Whereas these are so great because you can just stir fry them, no problem. And they just get the perfect texture with the quick stir fry without really any prep. So for me, from growing, and that's what you learn from growing, this is just kind of the more preferred sort of day-to-day. -day. And it's funny that I say that now because I just remembered, as I said that, this morning, speaking of the Italian eggplants, I, not this morning, about two hours ago, I wrapped them up in tin foil and threw them in the oven 
just to roast so I can make some like baba ganoush. And I think I felt something hot and that was the oven that was just <laughs> on for a while. But I actually think they, they take so long. They take so long. It's funny, I'm, I'm messing things up all over the place. So I am gonna cut this eggplant, but I realize that I need to do the beef. I've got some beef that I'm gonna season up, but we'll just finish off this eggplant. And I'm just slicing it nice and thin. There we go. All right, slice down the house and just rumble through. And remember, this is our Q&A. We are celebrating 4 million on Pro Home Cooks. Any questions you have, feel free to throw them out. You ready for some questions? Yeah, let's, let's hear it. I'm ready. Let's We're see. off. All right, first up, we got Allie. Two questions. Is yes. sourdough worth it? <laughs> I mean, say so. Who do you think you're asking, Allie? <laughs> what do you think I'm going to say? No, it's not worth it? And it's like I built a career off that bread. <laughs> What's the second? And, uh, is your garden thriving this year? Oh, two great questions. Good, good way to kick it off, Allie. So just before I answer those questions, I have this piece of meat. It's called a piece of meat right here. This is a piece of beef. They call this a Merlot steak. It's super lean, to be honest. I, you can get an overhead of that. I don't know much about this at all. My friend Farmer John works at a really uh, awesome um, uh, farm, and he's the butcher there, and he just kind of threw me some treats. And this Merlot steak is new to me, so I don't know what cut it is, but it's lean, and it looks prime for stir-frying. So I'm just going to get a little plastic cutting board since we're cutting with meat i'm gonna throw it on and i'll answer your question yeah Allie. we got uh, oh yeah go ahead so basically that. is sourdough worth it hell yes to me like you know i started my sourdough journey um maybe six years ago and i have oh my god it's just completely changed the game it's changed my life i made an entire course on it um, as many of you know some of you might have taken that course i've obviously put out a lot of videos but you know i i think it was yeah it was michael pollan that was the first time i really was like influenced someone influenced me now you know i'm influencing you hopefully but I, I heard him talking about sourdough in his book, Cooked. He did a whole segment on it. And you know how it's the traditional bread method. It's, it's, we call it sourdough, but really it's just naturally fermented bread. And um, it's like once you kind of make it and taste it, it's hard to go back to just the regular baker's yeast. And I could talk... You know, starting off with that question, I could talk about it for an hour straight. So it's almost like you don't want to get me started with it. Um, but um, yes, it is certainly worth it. If you want to learn more, just check out, you know, my videos. You can check out my course, Sourdough You. It's on ProHomeCooks.com. Um, and I will say, you know, once once you make sourdough, you'll you'll never go back to. I mean, I still make some regular baker's yeast bread with those little yeast packets. Specifically, you know, when I'm making pizza and I don't have a ton of time, it's still fine. But bread products made with natural fermentation are game changer. And also, they just make your they make your bread making skills just improve so much. Just the you know learning how to make sourdough bread all of your bread making skills improve. And that was like a, uh, a side effect I didn't expect to happen. And yes, my garden is thriving. Year two, things are just out of control. Right now it's like so hot. I'm just adding some pepper, right, you know, right to the meat, right to the cutting board. I'll mix it up on this. The first year I had a garden, it was like kind of weak sauce you know when your soil is new and you know, it's not very um it's not it's not thriving with life forms and the, the microbiology it's hard to grow things and then all of a sudden you get this diversity and you start building your soil and things just kind of grow like crazy so that's why you know part of this video is just kind of a celebration of the garden as well um, with all of these things. I believe this and the rice noodles and, you know, some condiments are going to be the only things that I am not using from the garden. So there we go. We've got our steak. And I think what I want to do there 
is give that like a quick stir fry. Um, that's got some nice salt and pepper on it. I just have some pork fat right here. You can use any oil and I will get that in the wok, which is super hot and just give that a quick stir fry. And then, um, yeah, then we'll, we'll go on with our veggies. <laughs> That's what I was going for. There you go. <laughs> this is a beautiful shot, not Cooper's face. Just joking. Just Me joking. staring at this face. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, yeah, we got plenty. Okay. Um, Keep them a, coming. Yeah, we got a couple super chats. Um, 805 Barbecue Junkie. Thank you for the super chats. Five dollars. Just nice congratulatory message. Oh, thank you. Thank By you. the way, things might get a little loud. I'll try to keep it down a bit, but we're stir frying here, so, um, so I'll I'll try to stand back because the 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 interference sometimes from the sizzle gets out of control. Another super chat from Inti. Whichever currency Thank that you. Is. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. While that's happening, I'm going to slice up some other veggies for this sort of, you know, I'm calling it, we'll just call it a rice noodle stir fry, sort of inspired by a Thai patsu. This is some zucchini from the garden. And this is the best thing about, you know, growing your own food. It's, it's like you have these base recipes and you've got these base skills that obviously I have at this point. And now it's just going out in the garden pretty much every day at this point and just seeing what's fresh. Like, you know, I'm going to make this dish in the spring and it's going to look a whole lot different than these summer inspired veggies. It's going to have, you know, all the brassicas, the broccoli, the cauliflower. Now we've got eggplant. We've got zucchini. We've got, we're not stir frying cucumbers in this, but we got peppers, tomatoes, um, corn, my first corn, which is amazing. Give us a stir fry. That looks good. We got a uh, question about the wok you're using right yeah. there. This from thing Robert. right here is from Hexclad, um, which is fantastic. Hexclad is really unique. It's basically a blend almost of stainless steel and nonstick with this sort of unique technology that they've created. And you get the benefits of stainless steel with the benefits of nonstick. So it's really been a game changer for me. Hexclad, I've got a bunch of their products. All right, let's get, the, this stuff is really stir frying up nice. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. Okay, so I just want to quick, I'm, I'm even going to try this. I don't think it needs to cook for long. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't want to overcook that at all. That is so good. So juicy. It almost tastes like filet. Super lean, but really flavorful. That is called a Merlot steak. But if you are, you know, inspired by this recipe... Um, obviously any type of meat, you can go vegetarian, you can add some eggs in it. I'm just gonna pop in a little bit more fat and then we're gonna get in. Bam. All right. Looking good. What else we got, Cooper, from the piece? We got, uh, from Food Origins Podcast, what is your favorite top three tools in the kitchen? Top three tools in the kitchen. Fantastic question. Food Origins podcast. Huh. What's your podcast about? I would love to know. Food Origins, I'm guessing. But, you know, <laughs> a little, little bit more details would be great for the people and for myself. Top three kitchen tools as I look around. Cutting board. This is from my dad makes these cutting boards. But just a good wood cutting board or you can get like a rubber cutting board. Um, plastic cutting board is good for meat, as you've seen. You want one of those. Um, obviously, you know, a good, just all-purpose chef knife. I've got a bunch <laughs> back here. Like, you just, for me, I just kind of collect them and 
whatever I'm inspired by, I'll use. But um, just one good all-purpose cutting uh, knife. This is an Akiri style, great for vegetables, but anything of that size. Um, and man, this is a tricky question. What do I use all the time? A good wood spatula is really gonna be a game changer. Um, actually, my dad just started making some spatulas and just like, so not this, I don't have it here, um, but just a really good hefty wood spatula. I'll use that for everything. Okay, look at that, yummy, yummy. That just looks out of control. So it's even a little undercooked because I'm gonna end up adding that back to this noodle stir fry. So we're going in with a little bit. You can see that steak really absorbed a lot of the fat. More fat, and I'm gonna go right in with the eggplant. I'm gonna go in with the zucchini. And then I think I'm gonna chop up some of these peppers, which I don't even know. I'm not big on like, to be honest, on varieties. And I just don't have the mental space to remember the varieties of vegetables. There's so many. <laughs> so these are kind of like long green peppers. That's what I'll say. Um, and they're not spicy, but I'm gonna slice these up and get those in there as well. And the way I'm kind of judging this is just, you know, how will these vegetables cook uh, and timing. So the zucchini and the eggplant and these peppers, they're all gonna be similar size and they're all gonna cook around the same timing. Um, and then if I wanted to throw in something that was like, you know, more delicate, like some mushrooms or, um, you know, some of that fresh corn, then I would go on with that after. We got a question, um, what are, what do you think are the cheapest, best proteins? Cheapest, best proteins. Well, generally any protein that is, good question, any protein that is a tougher protein, like a tougher cut, more connective tissue, that's gonna be cheaper than your more tender steak stuff, like what I just cooked. Um, and you know, chuck, short rib, um, you know, uh, a pork butt, things like that. Those are gonna be the cheaper cuts. This definitely needs some more fat because it just kind of soaked everything up and it's almost burning versus stir frying. There we go. And then I'm gonna get these peppers in. I just kind of cut them, little, little slivers. Um, so that is, your, your cheap cuts right there. And you, you definitely wanna learn how to cook those well because they are cheaper. It's nice to get a steak, it's nice to get something like this, but the other cuts that are tougher are gonna, are gonna you know, go so much further in your kitchen um, because you can get a lot of them and you can slow cook them in the oven. You can slow cook them in your you know, slow cooker, um, in a crock pot make a big batch of something. So any uh, great one that I just cooked and made into tacos on my Instagram was um, pork shank. Pork shank, it's like the, the pig's ankle and it's so good. It's gonna be one, of, it was very cheap, two big shanks and I made tacos for like a week with that. So you really wanna learn how to master the, uh, or at least get good enough at slow cooking meat. If you, you know, if you eat meat, that's, that's number one. Um, because those cuts are gonna go so much further in your kitchen. And then you treat yourself with something, you know, a little, a little more tender, like this Merlot steak. Um, yeah, hopefully that answered your question. So we are stir frying here, things are looking good. I'm not even gonna salt this right now. Generally, when you add salt, that starts the osmosis process. It starts pulling out moisture from your vegetables, which then starts wilting your vegetables. Right now, I really want the stir. I'm losing vegetables, just <laughs> like one at a time. Um, so I like salting things later. Once I get this really nice brown, then I'll season but things are looking good here. So what I'm gonna start doing is working on a little bit of a sauce for this noodle stir fry. So let's check our noodles real quick. They should be softened, yep. See, already nice and pliable. 
And again, this works if, if you're doing like those rice papers and you're making a, a summer roll, same thing, just a little bit of water and you, you're now softened. And then I'll just dump that in there and boom, shalaka, we're good to go. Okay, so we're just, oh my God, I keep losing it. My wok game right now is uh, pretty weak sauce. Um, so I've got a bunch of condiments over here from the fridge and you can't really see them. I'm gonna kind of bring them over one by one and I'll get a little mixing bowl here. Ooh, that was loud. And I'll just start the action. And in the meantime, while I'm making this sauce, hit me with the questions. Here we go. Oh, and we got a um, reply from Food Origins. Okay. I'll put that in there. Yeah. Or Food so, Origin Stories. Okay. Or just Origin Stories. Growing up, their culture, favorite foods. I love it. Nice. So check out Food Origins Podcast. I love it. All right. So I'm just going to go two, three, three tablespoons of soy. Totally just eyeballing this. Um, trying to balance flavors. I have some black vinegar here. You can use rice vinegar. This is going to be your acidic. I'm going to do two of that. Okay. Then I've got a little fish sauce. That's our Southeast Asian influence. Again, that Thai sort of patsyu. Boom, boom, boom. Not, yep. Oh, here we go. We've got a little bit. All right. Now we're going over to Japan with some mirin, which is uh, like a sweetened sake, two hits of that. And then I have, this is coming from my own basement, very unique. This is an um, it's a cashew miso paste. Ooh. Just a little umami action in there. It's a little bit sweet, it's super young. You can use regular miso, you can skip this. Again, we're just trying to create a really flavorful sort of stir fry sauce here. All right, then we move over to just a little bit of sesame oil, just a tiny bit, because that stuff is powerful. Okay, and then um, I'll do, we'll save the sesame seeds. You know what, I wanna try this. Since I didn't even add, which is crazy, I didn't add garlic. I have all this garlic from my garden this and i didn't have the onion but it's all right because i have it in dried form right here this is from the last preservation video garlic dehydrated garlic scape and onion tops powder that's gonna freaking add a flavor bomb explosion okay so let's stir fry that up and then oh another thing which i'll just add right here is that steak juice oh yeah, oh, you know it, you know it. I love steak That's an juice. in the moment, yeah, that's an in the moment sort of. I got uh, a question the... here um, about your advice on being a food uh, vlogger and making money on YouTube. Okay. Any tips on getting started? Stay away, <laughs> stay away. <laughs> uh, you know, I was just thinking about this today on the, pick, I was picking up my daughter some reason oh because i'm talking to someone who is like an up-and-coming youtuber on friday and i was just thinking about advice and you know the biggest thing that kind of came to me was let me taste this wow that's powerful but good mm. okay so these are nice and stir fry you know i'm not even going to add any salt at all because that sauce is like very salty which should carry through the noodles it should carry through the vegetables just fine um so let me just think about this before i answer that question because it's super important so we have that we have that all right i think we're ready to go yeah so i'm gonna add the steak good cut cooper i saw that one in the moment Come on we're, li we're live <laughs> And then I'm gonna add, let's see if I want all these noodles. Yeah, why not? I got the, that's the point of a wok. You got the space. I love cooking live because I'm just getting dinner, you know? <laughs> um, and then we're gonna add our sauce in there. 
Oh, you know what I had that I wanted to add? Now it's coming to me. Let me see if I should be here somewhere. Is it here? Is it here? Where are you? Where are you? I'm looking for some, come on. Yes. Yes. There you are. This is kind of where this idea came from. And I almost forgot one of the most important ingredients, which is just a shit ton of basil. Really get that, you know, that Thai sort of basil noodle stir fry. Forget what they call that dish, but it's just loaded up with basil. And I have so much in the garden right now. So it's like, why not? Okay, we're going to crank and we're going to go for it. So now we have those soaked noodles and you can see they're already absorbing that sauce. They're heating up. I'm gonna switch to some tongs just to make sure everything's incorporated. And they should really hit that perfect. Look at that basil in there. Wow, this, this is exciting stuff. And we're just kind of start frying everything together until we hit that perfect texture, which I'm going to try right now. And I am holding off on your question because I really want to give it my attention. I mean, once the noodles are cooked and have absorbed all that sauce, which, come on. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. They didn't eat any salt on that vegetables because that's that's hitting a nice salty punch. And one thing I learned from my friend Derek is that some of these noodle dishes like you'd get in Thailand, some are super kind of dry. Some have more sauce and are a little more wet. This to me, it's like, you know, I could add water, I could thin it out, but I'm actually enjoying the sort of drier aspect of it. So we're gonna get that off. Okay. Do I have a little basil? Yep, a little basil garnish. Wow. That is exciting right there. Let me just try another piece of beef. Even just this beef stir fried with that sauce. Mmm. Wow. That's insane. Yes, Cooper will taste some of this after. You don't want him munching though on camera in front of that mic. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna work on another dish, but first I'm gonna answer your question. First, I'm gonna take a sip. So the, my biggest, I would say, or my number one piece of advice for anyone starting up as a, you know, whatever you want to call it, influencer, YouTuber, I'm just making content for the internet. I've been doing this actually for like 10 years, which is crazy. Now we're here, 4 million subs. Yeah. Um, but the biggest thing is to... Figure out what makes you, you, <laughs> what makes, what is going to make your channel unique is the uniqueness of yourself, if that makes sense. Because what happens is, you know, content, the content space is changing so rapidly. Like I've been through so many shifts. I've seen people come, I've seen people go and, you know, you have to adapt and, if you're constantly trying to keep up with trends and you know what other people are doing, you're gonna get lost in in the waves. You know you're gonna get you're gonna get carried away because just because things are changing so fast and someone's always there to potentially do what you know copy what you're doing or um, you know obviously if you're relying on what other people are doing then that changes then you're kind of screwed. Um, so I think what, what's kind of helped me the most is always connecting back to, you know, what is, what is it that I'm bringing that is unique 
to myself. And that's where you're going to find the most success because there are thousands and thousands and millions of creators now, like just within the last few years with COVID and the explosion of short form content, you see this wave of um, creators. And it's been a little overwhelming, to be honest, for someone who's been on YouTube for so many years. And that's why I've been thinking about this a lot. And you know, what is always going to keep you in the game is just what really is unique that you can bring to the table. Um, and the, the, the tricky part about that, you know, it's not just, I think in the beginning that that's somewhat easy or can be easier because you just, you're just getting into the game and that's kind of the important thing is just going, but what you're, what you you build an audience, like I've built an audience and then wh what makes you unique also changes because you're changing as a person. So you have to adapt. And that can be tough because your audience comes to expect something um, and you've built an audience on something and then you're like, oh, I actually, you know, this is what makes me unique or this is what I'm inspired by. But it's important to continue to follow that or, you know, I think you can run into issues. So that was, yeah, kind of my, my, my <laughs> long answer to that. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to start this next dish because I have these beautiful cucumbers. Um, I don't even, again, I don't, I don't do varieties, but they're fantastic. These cucumbers, uh, my cucumbers have been getting hit by some, I don't know, bacteria, I think from these cucumber beetles and they're dying off. Um, so this is kind of, uh, uh, some of the last of them actually, uh, but there's plenty more in the garden. So all good. Any other questions? Yeah, we've been getting a, a few questions about Josh, how he's doing. Cool. And then I think somebody asked what his channel's called as well. Yeah, so Josh over on You Enjoy Life. Josh is doing great. He's having a kid soon, um, which is very exciting. Um, Josh and I were actually working together for the last year um, a bit on the creative on Pro Home Cooks. We're not working together anymore, but um, yeah, Josh is doing great. And, you know, go check out his stuff. He's, you know, he's got a bit of everything. Music, obviously. I don't, if you've seen his stuff, he does a lot of barefoot action. Um, <laughs> bear, yeah, barefoot, uh, barefoot life. Um, and a lot of gardening as well. A lot of homesteading. He's raising chickens. So, you know, he, he loves that stuff as well. Just going to slice up these cucumbers then. I'm going to make a little cucumber, like a quick marinated cucumber salad. Let's see how that goes. Oops. Rattle through these. You got uh, any tips on cooking fast? Cooking fast. He said his meals usually take him an hour and a half, something to make things go quicker. Yeah, that was sort of the inspiration from my 15-minute um, dinner series because, you know, for, for, for me, with kids now, everything has changed with my cooking. Most of my meals are fast. Like, I'm coming home, and if I don't get dinner on the table, we have a problem. <laughs> like, it's serious. It's kind of like you're working in a restaurant all of a sudden. It, it used to be on your terms, and now it's not on your terms. Um, I've got customers. So... <laughs> I think the biggest thing is just having those sort of having those base skills and those meals that you can rely on. So for me, you, you can find a lot of those in my 15 minute dinner series. Um, you know, my go to's are going to be something like, you know, a noodle stir fry, uh, pasta, so many different versions of pasta, um, uh, noodle soup, um, salads. Uh, what else do I make all the time? I'm trying to think of like my really quick uh, lettuce wrap. So like I have, you know, a rotating cast of, you know, maybe eight dishes that I know I can adapt any ingredient to. I understand like a pasta, for instance, I understand how to build out a pasta sauce in um, in a bunch of different varieties and versions. You know, I can go a pesto route. I can do a white wine sauce. I can do a tomato-based sauce. So I have these skills, ba these, these base skills. And 
what happens is I, in the moment, I can just go into my fridge. Like, honestly, I go home, I open up the fridge and it's like, go to work. It's like, a, you know, an episode of Chopped, basically. And I just go to town, um, just sort of adapting things in the moment to make it work. So I think what slows people down a lot is, you know, being overwhelmed by, oh, do I have the right ingredients? Is this going to work? Do I need to go to the market? Things like that. Like you got to just get in there and go. And that's going to come from years of just learning how these, uh, you know, learning these base skills and techniques in these different dishes. Um, so yeah, you just, you keep learning, you, you have those staples and then you just get better at adapting. How about, uh, what is your favorite kind of squash to grow? Good question. I really like, I'm trying to think, I, I showed you the more in, in this meal that went in there, there was that Italian, just standard green squash or not even Italian. I don't even know what that, um, do I have, oh, this thing again, I don't do names and varieties, but this has been an incredible zucchini. This is the Italian, um, zucchini. I forget the name of it. It's a little, you know, that's actually going to the Chickens, it's a little wilted, um, but I love that thing. It just stir fries up really nice. And I'm doing some winter squash for the first time. So I'm kind of, you know, I've just grown the basic zucchinis and um, different versions of those. I'm getting more into the winter squash, which I think will be very exciting. Um, and yeah, so I'll keep you updated, but let me know what, uh, if you have any suggestions there. So I'm going to add these cucumbers right in and we're just building out a, a quick cucumber salad. And you know what? It's like, I'm, I'm kind of weighing these two dishes right now and I'm trying to balance out flavors. So this is super salty. This is, um, you know, this is a bit, this has got a tang to it with some of that vinegar, super meaty. This I, I want super fresh. I want it light. Um, it could even be a little spicy because I actually didn't add any spice to this. Um, so that's really my goal here. So I'm going to take this corn. We've got fresh, sweet corn. My daughter, both my daughters will just like take this right off the stock. I just chop it in half and they just munch on it and go to town. My one daughter was like, this is crazy. It's not hot because she thinks corn has to be heated up. I'm like, no, nope, it's that good. This is, this is as sweet as candy, this corn. It's crazy right off the stalk. And we're just going to slice this down. We're going to add that to the salad. So this is going to be a, you know, not a traditional salad per se, in, uh, you know, Western culture where you have a bunch of leaves. This is gonna be a heartier salad, veggie salad. We're gonna add that. And let's see, let's keep on going. What other, huh? Oh, we got some tomatoes. Obviously we're adding those. This is kind of just coming about in the moment. You know, I have this little jalapeno. I wanna add that too. Um, so we'll slice that up again, adding a little spice. I was going to add sambal, but it's like, let's just add the fresh spice in there. This is, this is feeling very nice right now. Hopefully those aren't too spicy. I'll just slice these tomatoes in quarters. Got a question here. What do you think about the keto diet or the mm. carnivore diet? Yeah. So, you know, diets in general, I just, so I, I just collabed with, um, hand, oh, homegrown, hand gathered Jordan and Sylvan who are master foragers and they grow food. Um, I love their channel. They taught me how to inoculate shiitake logs. So grow mushrooms on logs, which is so cool. Um, and we had some great conversations and, and one of our conversations, um, was about this, you know, different diets and, and sort of food culture. Um, and I think what you see, this is, you know, this is in my 
humble opinion, okay? So take that however you want. But what you see a lot in Western culture, especially you know places like the US, we have such a young food culture in the grand scheme of things, a few hundred years old versus thousands of years of food culture from other place. Um, so if you go to Italy, you know, a place with extremely strong food culture, it's hard to kind of infiltrate that. You don't see much fusion. You don't see, you know, much fast food. It's going to be, people aren't, you know, you're not going to see as many diets and fads. People are just eating Italian food. <laughs> it is very non-keto based. It is the opposite of keto and they're fine. Um, you know, they would, they would, they would probably laugh the keto diet, you know, out of existence over there. Um, but that's, you know, one example. So, you know, I think what you see is that the, the sort of the explosion of diets is I think a lot of people looking for answers because we have such little food tradition, it's very easy to be infiltrated and say, this is a great way to live. You know, this is, you know, try this, try this, or factory saying, you know, cut out the fat, cut out the sugar. Like I grew up on all of this stuff, diets and, um, you know, fat free and sugar free and all these things. Um, and there was the Atkins diet, which was very carb, um, you know, carb free back in the day. And I remember my parents were big into that at times. Um, but what I personally kind of live my life by is something different, which is hunting down, not, not removing foods, but hunting down and just always trying to find the, the best quality. And that starts with just home cooking first. I'm just going to turn up the exposure. You know, home cooking is always going to be a, a, a way to get fresher food to control the ingredients. And then you can go a step further. You can grow some food or you can go to the farmer's market or you can just try to track down better quality ingredients. And I think a lot like something like keto, I totally understand why that's so popular because, um, you know, over here in the West, we have such a strange relationship with carbs. Um, and you know, you see all, you also see so much gluten free and it, it's very confusing. And a lot of it has to do with just quality. And like I said, when I started this off, the first question on sourdough, we have such uh, poor bread products, um, from, you know, monocultures of, uh, certain wheats that are just good for, for mass production to, speedy fermented breads that are, again, good for factory production. Um, all of these things lead to worse bread products and, you know, carb-based products that makes people feel worse, that make people sick. So it's obvious that, you know, when you remove them, you start feeling better. Same thing with, you know, vegetarian. Not that any of these things are wrong at all, but for me, you know, I've been on a lot of these journeys where you remove something, you feel better, but ultimately I come back because I think humans, we want a complete diet of all these things. There's a reason we crave carbs. There's a reason we crave sugar, but you want to do it in the healthiest way possible. Um, and that to me is connecting to a healthier way to make them, uh, you know, better ingredients and all of these things. So yeah, I know that was a long answer, but <laughs> good one. <laughs> Thorough. <laughs> Thorough. We got a, another one here. Yeah. Um, how do you keep squirrels out of the garden? <laughs> oh, it's like I thought that was about cooking squirrels. I'm like, okay, <laughs> this isn't alone out in the wilderness. Um, so, man, the questions today are are hitting, just like very relevant to me. This is was a really interesting journey that I went on. Um, so I have tomatoes, I have corn, I have jalapeno, I have cucumbers. Now I'm just going to season this up. So first I'm going to take a little bit of fresh garlic from the garden and I will grate that in. I also have a little bit of ginger. Um, so basically squirrels, rabbits, birds, um, all of these things, you know, small little mammals that can just decimate your garden. And so many people in this area of Long Island 
really have issues. The rabbits are just out of control around here. Cooper, I'm sure you've seen rabbits everywhere. Oh, yeah. It's Front just... lawn every day. Can you uh, go Can overhead? You I just want to. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, they're just everywhere. They eat everything. Um, and, you know, this year, last year, I had a lot of issues. Like, you know, I grew tomatoes and the first crop of tomatoes just got decimated. And I think it was squirrels. Um, okay, we're good. I just wanted good. to change the um, exposure. And um, that really pissed me off. That really pissed me off. I grew all these tomatoes and they were just straight up destroyed. Now, <laughs> what I found was, this is kind of, I don't know if you've seen this documentary called um, uh, Biggest Little Farm on Amazon Prime. Highly suggest this documentary. It's about a uh, farmers that go out and start a farm out in California and just all of the issues and just, you know, all of the growing pains to create a sustainable farm. Um, and it's a lot about kind of connecting to the natural uh, balance of an ecosystem. And one thing that came this year was there's always been hawks in this area. Um, but one thing that came this year were some juveniles, some young hawks that took up residence on that tree right there, which you can't, that tree is huge. It is like 60 feet up. And the reason they took up residence is because over there I have chickens and I have lost chickens to hawks. It's just, you know, it, it happens, especially they were free ranging more when I got here. Um, and now the hawk pressure is so intense that they, they don't really free range. But um, at first I'm like, okay, this is, this is terrible. You know, the, these hawks are just like, like I'm living with a predator. It's intense. Um, hawks are no joke. Those are serious predator birds. And all right, grating some garlic and ginger. But what I started to notice was there was a lot less pressure from things like squirrels and rabbits and even birds. And I remember from the documentary, they said the hawks keep those smaller little mammals at bay. Um, so it's just another thing of like the natural life cycle. Like, yeah, it sucks with my chickens that they just can't free range, but then my vegetables are like extremely well protected because of these hawks. So <laughs> that's, that's how I keep those things um, kind of managed is, you know, a family of hawks that live here. But I will say like, I, I oh, that's the end of the soy sauce. I had, um, I had, we're gonna use a little bit of rice vinegar. I had an entire peach crop. It was my first year of peaches and one night just completely gone. Squirrels just took every single peach. They weren't even ripe. I think it was squirrels. It had to be squirrels because there was just no evidence of anything. They just took the peaches and gone. So um, that's a hard one. You know, I have an organic garden. I don't use any pesticides or anything like that. So part of it too that I'm learning is just growing enough food that everyone can kind of get involved. And even if you lose 30% of this crop or you know 100% of this crop, you've got another crop. And that happens over time. And like even this year, it's like, okay, you know, I lost this, but um, I still have plenty. And I think that's my goal is to grow so much food that it doesn't even matter. Like if you lose a whole crop, you still have so much. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at it in an organic garden. So I just added some salt, some pepper, some vinegar, um, and a little bit of soy. You know what? I'm going to kind of mash this like a, like a smash cucumber. Smash cucumber salad. That looks great. Quick little salad. Oh, just pack the punch with that garlic and that ginger. I'm gonna have some sesame seeds, little crunch, but a great look as well. You know what? I want a little bit of Jordan and Sylvan. My collaborators, they gave me this like really special honey. 
comb honey. Linden comb honey. Apparently it's some special stuff. I'm just going to add a little bit of that. Just a little bit of sweetness. Boom, boom, boom. And yeah, any more uh, questions? Because I'm going to be kind of rounding it out here. Uh, yeah, just quickly for uh, people just joining us, what yeah. are we making right now? So what we made, this is all going to be, you know, replayable. Over here, which doesn't look as sexy as it did when it came fresh out of the wok, I can tell you that much. Let's take this wilted basil leaf off. This, let me spruce it up a little bit. This was a little steak and eggplant um, noodle stir fry, rice noodle stir fry, which was delicious. And then we have this nice little side cucumber, tomato, fresh corn salad. Mm, mm hmm. That honey was great. Great move. That's it. I'll take any final questions if there yeah. are any. Let's see here. Have you tried haggis? Haggis is like the Scottish, right? It That's, sounds Scottish. I have. Have you tried from, haggis? Yeah, from and when my MTV days with my brother, we went to um, we went to uh, where did we go? Where were we were trying haggis? Forget the actual town. Um, man, I can't remember. <clears throat> but yes, I have tried haggis. Quite interesting. Um, yeah. Have you seen the bear? The uh, show on i think it's on Hulu. <laughs> oh is i thought that was a bear oh, avatar it's a dog right <laughs> big old dogs. um i have seen i watched half of the first season um thought it was pretty good you know again i'm not like it's not something that was like super exciting to me i thought the show was cool the way it was filmed it was cool to see maddie matheson in there but again you know restaurant kitchens are more that's not my thing um you know i'm a home cook at heart um so it's not like super exciting for me um yeah i'll say that <laughs> <laughs> i hate that goddamn show <laughs> no just joking it's a cool show if you're uh, starting a garden what do you recommend to grow first honestly garlic and onions um which is what i learned this year because everyone wants to grow. I just put out a video is coming out next week, so stay tuned. Um, I <clears throat> just, you know, when I started last year, it's like you want to grow everything and you get crazy. You want to grow the tomatoes, obviously. But tomatoes come with a lot of issues. There's a lot of pests and they, you know, they have to ripen on the vine or close to it. So there's so many things that can happen in the interim. Whereas garlic and onions, the actual bulb grows underground, so many less pests. You can harvest it throughout the entire life cycle, which is great, so you get harvest throughout. It's not like you have to wait four months and then you know a squirrel eats your tomato. Um, so, and they just grow so easy, I find, compared to say some of the, you know, some of the plants like cucumbers and you know my cucumbers just all died off so i didn't have any of those issues with garlic and onions how about uh what is your go-to reheating technique what technique reheating reheating technique um we'll do one more question after this and we'll, we'll cap it off um so air fryer <laughs> yeah the air fryer by far it's just the quickest to preheat um and yeah definitely definitely the air fryer rather than like you know preheating your entire oven and doing all of that or microwave you know sometimes the microwave is going to be the best all right last one we got a cooking specific okay i've got instagram how over do here you too. cook eggs for an omelet do you add milk i can never get the consistency right I generally don't add milk. I find it's a little trickier to make omelets with milk. Um, and I, you know, omelets are so technique based. I like a nice medium high heat. Like you want to get a good sear, get the eggs moving right away. You, you want a good, you know, seasoned pan or nonstick pan, get the eggs heating right away. 
and or get them mixing up so those curds kind of form and then um, let them just sit and build that crust and then you can hopefully flip it or roll it or do whatever you do. And was that the last one or is there? We could do, the, I got, yeah, there's plenty. Okay, just yeah. a few more, a few, a few more. more. Yeah. How long have we been going? It's uh, 155, so we're under an hour. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, what would you say are the sauces slash spices that are essential for every kitchen? You know, depends on the type of food you like to eat. Obviously, I do a lot of Japanese food, Chinese food, um, Southeast Asian food. So um, over here, you have all of these things that I've used today. So I keep things stocked with things like mirin and um, fish sauce and soy sauce and vinegar, black vinegar, rice vinegar, miso paste, you know, getting a nice base there that I can build out a good stir fry sauce or whatever it is, or, you know, marinade. Um, but then there's also, you know, if you're, if you've got Mediterranean food, you know, different spices, you, you're going to want, you know, some tahini on hand. Um, uh, you know, if you're doing, um, if you're cooking a lot of Indian food, obviously, you know, you want a good uh, cabinet of spices or Mexican food. You want some dried peppers and, and um, different things, you know, some dried oregano. So it just really depends on what you like to cook. But having a base, uh, base ingredients, base condiments and sauces for that uh, cuisine is key. And then, of course, you know, having like a few barbecue sauces and <laughs> some ketchup. Like you won't see a fridge of mine without those things because sometimes you just want to dip, you know, in barbecue sauce and ketchup and, you know, or yeah, it's just vital to have like that all purpose flavor enhancer. Another one here. Do you have any formal cooking training? Zero. <laughs> yeah. So I, Started cooking in college, which was over a decade ago. Really just started cooking for my friends um, and my parents and just trying to like, trying to one, get more skills, but also like show people, definitely my parents that, you know, I'm good at this. I like this. Maybe this could be a career because that wasn't, I was um, studying architecture at the time. And I really thought about culinary school, like for a while. I wanted to, I was looking at a culinary school in New Zealand at some point, just to kind of do something a little wild. Um, and, you know, I thought it was just the standard path because I, I knew I wanted to make food content and have a cooking show, but at the same time, like I was starting a catering company. So I think I was just a little, you know, it was new to me. I was a little confused. I ended up just moving to New York. I started a catering company with my brother. And really that catering company was to supplement our creative lifestyle. He was a musician. I was doing the, the cooking videos. Um, and we, you know, we were doing uh, weddings, we were doing uh, business events, we were doing private dinner parties. So the truth is, it didn't matter. Like I didn't need for I wasn't cooking in a restaurant where sometimes they're like, you need to go to culinary school, um, especially high end restaurants, they require that stuff. Sometimes it's a little less now. But at the time, it just once I was getting into it, I was making money. And I didn't have a culinary degree. So at that point, it's like, well, you know, if I'm making money, you know, I guess I don't need to go spend money on this. Um, and I just kind of rode that wave until all of a sudden I realized that, wait a minute, actually this path of not going to a culinary school and this connection to home cooking is my passion. And that's what I want to spread, which is, you know, you don't need culinary school to, you know, cook for your, most of us are not getting paid to cook. Most of all of you watching, you know, 99.9% .9 of you are not getting paid. So it doesn't really matter if you're, you know, the best cook or you have proper technique. We're trying to produce food that tastes good, but more importantly, you know, <laughs> just feeds ourselves and our families. So you don't need culinary school for that. Got one here. How do I overcome my fear of baking the oven? I think I can answer that. Get an air fryer. There you go. There you go. Okay, Cooper. I honestly, yeah, what what would you say about that? Just 
I think it's just easier. Yeah. Less just, space doesn't heat the house up as much. Yeah, it's Easy more like a, it's like a video game, you know? It's yeah. like air fryers are so great because you just click a few buttons and you're cooking and you, you can you can easily adjust to where ovens like ovens is like steering a ship you know it's yeah. like slow adjustments whereas air fryers it's like a little speedboat you know you just tap a few things and boom now you're cooking less you cook so it's like very easy to see the outcome so i wouldn't have said that uh Good, good one on that, Cooper. Good I one. Something, I get something off. <laughs> um, how many chickens did you start with and how many are left? Good question. <laughs> so um, I started with around eight chickens. I've lost a few again to predators over the years. I've had to make some adjustments to the coop that I en enhanced um, or the coop that I inherited and I'm enhancing it now. I have 10 currently, I'm, you know, raising new chicks and, and things of that sort. Yeah. Nice. Oh, here we go. Have you ever made something that was inedible? Hmm. Were you able to save it? <laughs> Inedible is like, yeah, one time my my brother and I were catering an event and we broke a, like, it was like right before and a uh, glass bottle shattered in like this big vat of, you know, this thing we were cooking. So that was inedible, not, not like, this was like right before the event. And we're like, oh God, we got to go buy a shrimp again and make this whole thing and so not, you know, in that case, but I don't think that was what you were going for. Um, you know, I'm sure over the year, I've made plenty of things that don't taste great. You, you got to take risks sometimes. Um, but generally, generally, you know, I've thrown some things out, of, of course. Um, luckily now it's like with composting, it feels like nothing goes to waste because it just goes back into the soil. Um, but yeah, some things, you know, have gotten thrown out over the years. We'll do one more? Yeah. Is there anything you have cooked that you love but is still challenging to get right and that you'd absolutely love to nail one day? Oh, really good question, Dominique. Um, you know, I think when it comes to, I think the things that are most challenging are, for me are definitely bread products like croissants and, and pizza still like that's why i'm obsessed in sourdough i'm always going for better products and like i have gotten very close but there's always more to master and sometimes you you know speaking of inedible sometimes you burn a pizza and it's like you you feel like a rookie again so i'm always trying to master those things um and then a lot of fermentation projects you know trying to like i've been trying to make soy sauce for so long i keep messing that up mm -hmm. um yeah, so I'm always growing as a cook or trying to learn new things, and you know that's that's part of the game, and that's that's gonna do it. This was a lot of fun for Millie. We did it. We're still going. We are still going. Like I said, you got to adapt. You got to grow. That's what I'm doing for all of you. Hopefully, I'm just trying to stay inspired myself because you know what I what I like doing is sharing my inspiration um, and my inspiration is constantly changing right now i'm just obsessed with gardening and growing things and turning it into food and fermenting and preserving all these things um, so i'm just trying to continue to connect to that and hopefully i'll be doing that for years and years and years to come and um, yeah check out prohomecooks.com we've got great articles up there basically everything in this kitchen we are selling on prohomecooks.com so you can support the channel that way um, and more videos coming soon peace